You remember in a previous video where I said I wasn't going to chip out the remaining remnants of the concrete that was still attached to the block wall? Well, I lied. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the hole pretty much uh, cleared out with all the big rocks and debris and everything else in there. The only thing that's left in there now is the uh, red clay that you see. It's about six inches deep, and we're just going to level that out, tamp it down, compact it a little bit, and then get ready to throw in some base gravel. Mix in the bottom, tamp that down, and then throw a vapor barrier on top of that.
You remember in a previous video where I said I wasn't going to chip out the remaining remnants of the concrete that was still attached to the block wall? Well, I lied. That was the original plan, but the more I looked at it when we got through forming all this up, uh, the more realization occurred that we were going to have issues smoothing out the elevated portion of the concrete pour when it came to uh, getting it level against the original wall with remnants still hanging off of it. So I made the decision to go ahead and chip off at least eight inches in the bottom. Um, that way it'd have a nice smooth face to go up to and, and level and we could, you know, trowel everything out really nice. And then the more I looked at it after we did that, the more I realized it just felt like I was kind of leaving the job half complete if I just didn't go ahead and take it all out. And if you remember my previous statements, if you ever have the thought process in the middle of a project saying, hmm, I don't think this is the right way to do it, but we're gonna do it anyway. And I told you to stop. So that's pretty much where I came to the conclusion that I needed to, to just go ahead and, and do the whole thing. As tired as I am of working this jackhammer and, and hauling rock, or busted up concrete outside in the wheelbarrow, I think it was prudent and I think it was a good decision to go ahead and just just keep going. So the past two days I've spent chipping out the rest of the remnants remaining on the block wall. We have damaged some of the cylinder blocks, but that's not a big deal. We're just gonna fill in those cavities and, and unsmooth faces now with a little bit of mortar and then kind of do like a little skim coat stucco all over the whole thing. That way it's all nice and smooth and eventually, we're gonna build a two by four wall to attach the existing block and it'll be a nice smooth uh, concrete surface down here, a nice smooth wall right here, and then we're gonna attach it properly like was not done when the building was originally erected. We're gonna tie all that in together and then we're gonna tie it into this wall right here. Obviously, we're gonna replace the block that's missing and reattach that with mortar to the existing concrete block. But then we're going to build another wall over here and tie in these two wall systems together. That way there's a little bit of supporting structure other than just the block that kind of helps prevent that wall from wanting to tilt out if settling does occur in the future. Right now we're just concerned with getting everything ready to pour the concrete and smooth all this off and fix it and seal the shop up once and for all, which includes rebuilding that back wall, which I'm not a mason. I've uh, poured one concrete slab in my life. And that was on a previous shop. We did okay on that, uh, but that was all bag mix and uh, electric mixer. We need about two yards of concrete for this job. And that's about two yards more than I wanna mix via the bag and electric mixer, especially by myself. So we're gonna order a concrete truck for that. Even though it's only two yards, um, we're only talking about a $150 difference in price and a ton of difference in time. So. I've already spent too much time as it is doing everything that I've done. We're on like week three um, of putting in six to eight hour days of just coming out here and chipping out concrete and hauling it outside and then prepping this hole and getting all the forms built up. So I'm ready to get back on building cars, which is the whole reason we're doing all this so we can have a nice, clean, dust-free environment to build nice old cars in. I'm, I'm kind of tired of the construction work now. So um, I've got to rebuild this back wall in the future as well, we're gonna get all this poured in, pour our new little step foundation over there, and then lay all the block work up, which will be another interesting project because lo and behold, surprise, surprise, I've never laid a brick either in my life. So that'll be fun. Uh, learning new things is always fun. So let's get back to chipping out more rock.
So now that we got all this uh, remaining concrete remnants chipped off and into our what was nicely prepped, ready to go cavity and form for our concrete. We got all these chips that we got to get out. So let's get busy doing that. I'm really wishing I would have chipped everything off or at least made the decision to chip everything off before I uh, properly prepped that form and cavity and put all the base rock down because now everything's kind of mixed together and it's creating more work. All right, we're on our like second to last load and we popped a tire on our wheelbarrow. So we gotta go get another one. We're gonna do that and fix this and be right back. Hit that subscribe button. As always, we appreciate it very much and thank you so very much for watching this video.